Let us take a look at several examples of convex sets. Consider the convex cones. So convex cone is defined as suppose there are two points x1 and x2 in C then C is a convex cone. So this statement is equivalent to saying that theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2 belongs to C. So if x1 x2 belongs to C then theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2 belongs to C where theta1 theta2 are both non-negative numbers. So this is the definition of a convex cone. Contrast this with the definition of the convex set and affine set where we had a restriction in terms of what theta1 and theta2 can be with respect to each other. We always required that theta1 plus theta2 sum up equal to 1. In fact, we specified the affine set and convex set in terms of theta and 1 minus theta. So that is another way of saying that theta1 and theta2 add up to 1. But in this case, we have no restriction on what theta1 plus theta2 can be. So this can be arbitrary. But we do require theta1 and theta2 to be non-negative. Perhaps this point can be illustrated pictorially. So let's say that, let's consider this set. So in this set, you can see that a point of the form x1, let's say this is point x1 and this is point x2. So what will be theta1 x1? Theta1 x1 will be this line. Right? And theta2 x2 will be this line. So let me just mark it properly. This is the point x2 and this is the point x1. This is the line theta2 x2. Because you are multiplying x2 with arbitrary number or essentially you are scaling x2. And this is theta1 x1. So what is the set theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2? Essentially the set theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2 contains all the points or all the lines in between these two lines. So all the lines in between these two lines are contained. So this cone that you see here is essentially the cone that contains theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2. And clearly because this cone lies inside C, so this cone which I am calling theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2 lies inside of the original cone C. Therefore, this C is a convex cone. So this is the intuition behind using such a definition. It might be interesting to consider if convex cones are convex or not. So the question is, are convex cones convex? Well, in the name itself, it says convex cone, so there must be convex, but you can see it by considering the fact that convex cones allow theta1 and theta2 to be arbitrary numbers that are greater than or equal to 0. So naturally, a choice of theta1 and theta2 such that they both sum up to 1 is also covered. In other words, if you can guarantee that this holds for theta1, theta2 greater than or equal to 0, then it obviously holds when theta1 plus theta2 add up to 1. In fact, it would hold if they add up to 2, 3 or any number. So it obviously holds when they add up to 1 and this was what was required for convexity. Now, of course, this is not, convex cone is not affine. So convex cone is not affine because for affine, we require theta1, theta2 to be arbitrary and sum up to 1. But negative thetas are not being allowed by convex cone. So therefore, this is not an affine set, but it is still a convex set. So it is important for you to consider these relationships between affine sets, convex sets and convex cones. In the same way as convex hull, we can also define the convex conic hull. So. The convex conic hull is written as i equal to 1 to k 
theta i x i for k greater than or equal to 2 theta i greater than or equal to 0 x i belonging to c and that's it so we only require the coefficients multiplying x i to be greater than or equal to 0 we don't require any other condition we don't require them to sum up to 1 in this case so that is the definition of the convex conic hull there is lot more to these definitions and it would be better if you thought about them a little bit and try to relate them to each other. Come up with very simple examples of what a convex conic hull of two points would look like and so on. Let us look at some more examples of convex sets. Uh, some of these examples we have mentioned before but I will just state the definition afresh. So we have the hyperplane. So we also call it plane. This is the set of all x in Rn such that A transpose x is equal to B. In other words, I am only specifying a single equation. So a 2D example, which is perhaps more familiar to you. So x belongs to R2 and x1 equal to x2. So if I specify a single restriction between the two components of x in R2, then that constitutes a hyperplane. In 2D, a hyperplane is simply a line. In 3D, so in three dimensions, x in R3, for example, let's say that x3 equal to 0 is a valid restriction. This is a single equation this becomes the xy plane and that is the hyperplane in 3d so in the same way you can go to any dimension just have to specify a single equation and that will specify a hyperplane next let us come to half space we have already described what a half space is but formally a hyperplane divides a space into two half spaces. So what does that mean? You consider a hyperplane which is described by this equation a transpose x equal to b then the then this hyperplane divides the space into two half spaces. So one of them is x such that a transpose x is less than or equal to b and the other one is such that x such that a transpose x is greater than or equal to b. So these are the two half spaces. So pictorially you can imagine that this is the hyperplane which is a line in 2D and on one side you have one half space and on the other side you have another half space. So these are the two half spaces and the, uh, and the red line which is the hyperplane divides the space into two such half spaces. So what kind of set is a half space? We have already seen that it is not an affine set, right? Half space is not an affine set generally, but it is a convex set. It is indeed a convex set. So generally half space is not a convex cone unless b equal to 0. So in case b is equal to 0 then it does become a convex cone. So please try to prove this yourself. Prove this fact yourself. Then let us come to polyhedron. A polyhedron is an intersection of finite number of half spaces and hyperplanes. So it's an intersection of finite number of half spaces and hyperplanes. So you take any number of hyperplanes, any number of half spaces, just intersect them and that becomes a polyhedron. 
you can even take one half space and that is also a polyhedron so the polyhedron definition is very general